Hello, sacred beings, and welcome to season five of Sacred Sister Podcast. Mm. My name is Britt. So lovely to have you joining us. And oh my gosh, can I just say, we are so excited to be starting this season for so many reasons. There are so many exciting pieces that we're going to be adding to season five. And before we hop into the interview with today's guest, Iniko, I want to go over some of them. So this is a big deal, friends. <laughs> we are so excited to announce that we are moving from uploading twice a month. Y'all are really used to us uploading interviews two times per month every other Wednesday. And what we've been noticing these last seasons is that Sacred Sister really has a whole persona in and of herself. This project, this beautiful love child that Hannah and I have created has been so powerful. And we've really been witnessing the the beauty, the beauty in her energy. So a couple months ago, I asked Hannah, hey, how would you feel about expanding Sacred Sister Podcast? Are there ways that we can integrate shorter, more digestible bits of information and wisdom that would benefit the ears of every person listening? To which she replied, absolutely. (laughs) And I'm so grateful that she's on board for this update because we're moving from uploading twice a month to eight times a month. And what this is going to look like is Hannah and I are each going to be producing and giving, offering three individual episodes in addition to the two recorded interviews with guests that y'all know and love. These individual episodes are going to be between five and seven minutes to 20 minutes long, so they're really going to be digestible bits. And each of us have our own themes that we're going to be opening up on within these episodes. So if you are a seasoned listener, you know, and if you are brand new here, you're gonna know (laughs) by listening to our episodes that Hannah and I really specialize in different arenas, in our lives, in our business, in our energies. I'm going to let Hannah introduce her own segments, but I'm really excited to just allow myself to really open up and get more deep into the facets and arenas that I really love sharing and spending my time and energy. Be opening up more deeply on the chakra system and self-assessment, self-awareness, and gaining radical self-awareness so that we can map and transform the inner self-landscape. I'm going to be opening up on some topics and concepts that I see misconceptions about within the spiritual community. And I'm also introducing a really fun segment where I'm opening up on my social media platform on Instagram, where you can find me at Britlin Rising. And I'm going to be pulling in questions from blockages, challenges, and celebrations that people are going through in their own lives. I already did it for this month, so... Be sure to follow me on Instagram so that you can contribute to the next Q box that I'm uploading and you can be featured in one of these mini segments. So heading into this super fun episode, we're opening up the Hierophant season, season five with Iniko. Iniko is one of the most celestial voices on the indie soul scene. A gifted songwriter, producer, and multi-instrumentalist, Iniko leads an alternative soul revolution. Their sound is an amalgam of many musical styles, which leaves one's palate fresh and wanting to hear more. Their most recent release, Luna, is a captivating story of a girl who becomes something greater, an example of their evolving and ever-changing sound. Inspired by a plethora of music, as well as the unknown, Iniko is sure to bridge the gap between dimensions. Iniko is our first genderless guest! I'm the first guest that we're featuring that uses they, them pronouns. I'm so excited and I was so, like, honored to reach out to Aniko. I actually stumbled across their Instagram during a concert. They hold these live concerts on TikTok and Instagram. I remember it was just this beautiful backdrop of, like, these neon-colored lights and they were playing piano and just evoking this 
modern, soulful quality with these brilliant, brilliant lyrics that just hit me deep to the soul. Deep to the soul of my core. Deep to the core of my soul. (laughs) And I reached out. And I'm just so, so thrilled. This is their first podcast interview. And we're going to have all of the social media links in the uh, description of this episode so that you can go and follow them everywhere that they're available. If you're looking for a new artist to follow, a new artist to witness their music expanding, Aniko is one that you're going to want to check out 100%. Aniko has almost a million followers on TikTok, and yeah, I mean, we're going to open the episode with a piece of music, and then Aniko blesses us with a piece of music during the interview as well. It's a very exciting episode. (laughs) And for anyone who might be listening to this and they're like, oh my gosh, non-binary or genderqueer, like feeling yourself being curious feeling yourself being confused, feeling yourself being triggered, just know that this episode, I hope that you do lean into if you're feeling any of those energies and having your heart open to consider something beyond what your bubble presents to you. There's no harm, no foul in us having the the friend groups or circles or norms that we're used to i hope that you being here with sacred sister podcast i hope that you are willing to expand what you consider as normal what you consider as acceptable what you consider as um just okay It's like, let's press beyond this. We're in the year 2021. And especially if you don't understand how someone would come to be non-binary or genderqueer or genderless, please, my love, be open to receiving information from people. Be open to receiving their lived experiences. I love what Brene Brown says. Brene Brown is a brilliant teacher of mine. And she says, when we are confused, when we don't understand something about someone else, take a step in, take a step inward, take a step closer to them. Because what we can be used to is having someone, you know, trigger us because they present themselves in a way that's unfamiliar and uncomfortable because it's unfamiliar and we take a step away from them, point our fingers and assign a label to them. Weird. Not okay. Bad. A freak. You know, like these really damaging, harmful words that doesn't drive connection in this world. So may we take a step in and may we be open to learn. And for anyone who really hasn't heard of these terms before, I just want to to bring in some awareness. So non-binary or genderqueer is an umbrella term for gender identities that are neither male or female, identities that are outside the gender binary. Non-binary entities fall under the transgender umbrella since non-binary people typically identify with a gender that is different from their assigned sex. Though some non-binary individuals do not consider themselves transgender. Non-binary people may identify as an intermediate or separate third gender, identify with more than one gender, no gender, a gender, or have a fluctuating gender identity, which is gender fluidity. Gender identity is separate from sexual or romantic orientation. And non-binary people have a variety of sexual orientations, just as cisgender people do. Non-binary people as a group vary in their gender expressions, and some may reject gender identities altogether. So in this episode, we're so excited to really gather the story of Aniko, the past of Aniko, the mental health struggles of an ego. I think this is such an important topic to talk about here because of the state that the world is in and because of the divisiveness that we feel going on and because things are unsure and uncertain. And I think it's a wonderful topic to be opening up on. We all must come into some comfortability with talking about our mental health and what we're doing, how we're servicing it how we're really fortifying it, how we're bringing health to it. 
We talk about how the binary system was created by oppressors. We talk about homophobic rhetoric, the transatlantic slave trade. We talk about Aniko's self-experience as being sometimes quite alien. We talk about how the artistry has really been evolving the last couple years with Aniko. And how just, I want to say one year ago, there was like 2,000 followers on their Instagram. (laughs) Which is now something like 70,000 Instagram followers and almost a million on TikTok. So we talk about how this beautiful time, actually, we don't have to have like decades and decades and decades of presenting ourselves, of putting ourselves out there because the age of Aquarius is really connecting us and connecting our information and flowing and flooding our information in ways that we've never experienced before. And I love this time because it really speaks to and is a testament to how quickly really quality and really beautiful information that that people want to be receiving is able to be shared so much faster at lightning speed. This episode is full of so much wisdom and we are excited to present it to you. If you haven't already got if you haven't already go and check us out on Patreon. You're going to find the link to the Sacred Sister Podcast Patreon in the description of this episode. What Hannah and I do now with Sacred Sister Podcast is after each and every guest interview episode, Hannah and I go over to Patreon and record an entire episode on our insights, our thoughts, on the interviews that were just had, as well as sharing our personal stories because in the interview episodes, we mostly are focusing on the guest. In past seasons, like seasons two and three, we were sharing a lot of our personal stories in the episode, in the Sacred Sister podcast episode, but we really tried to hone back in season four, and we're continuing to do that now in season five. We're really focusing on the guest. So if you want to hear our personal insights and stories on the topic, on the guest, pop over to our Patreon and offer us Sacred Sister support. For $5 a month, you can get exclusive content. Usually our episodes are about 45 minutes to an hour long over there, and you can see them in their full video format. I also want to highlight a comment that just came into the podcast this week. For your chance to be featured, go and leave us a comment. Let us know how Sacred Sister Podcast is really hitting home for you what it is that resonates about this podcast that makes it different, makes it a wonderful experience for you to listen to. The title of this comment is Love the Profound Spiritual Message by Katrain16. Season four of the podcast blew my heart open even wider. So loved Britt and Hannah's choice to focus on male voices, especially as it pertained to the shadow, embracing it to transmute pain into growth and awakening. Looking forward to season five. (laughs) That's awesome. That is another beautiful way that you can offer Sacred Sister support for no dollars, (laughs) just for a minute of your time. And we so appreciate it. One of the big reasons that we're adding these additional episodes to Sacred Sister Podcast is because we've witnessed in the last couple years since starting this podcast, we're at 30,000 downloads now. And we're like, oh my gosh, the fact that we only upload twice a month, let's like totally amplify this message. We could be reaching so many people by also having shorter digestible bits. So that's exactly what we're going to be adding to this season. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Follow us at Sacred Sister Podcast on Instagram. And we will see you in the next episode, my love. Enjoy this beautiful episode witnessing Iniko's multidimensionality as a creative catalyst. Hello, sacred being. Welcome to the Inner Blueprint section here with your host, Hannah. And today we're going to look into Iniko's blueprint. We are using Western tropical astrology that's the astrology that I am certified in by the American Federation of Astrologers and I really love bringing in these little segments even now into season five as well because 
It's been such a pleasure to do these in a blueprint readings for our guests and to show you how they are expressing their archetypes in their lifetimes. And you can start recognizing some of those during the interview as well. So it makes astrology more practical and easier to understand. That's my intention with all of this. So let's get started with Iniko's inner blueprint. Iniko's sun is in Scorpio in the first house. It is also conjunct Mercury. So what does that mean? The sun shows how we express ourselves, how we shine our light, literally, uh, which means what brings us joy? When do we light up? How do we get fired up? <laughs> and for Iniko, with their sun being in Scorpio, they have this intense, powerful energy around them that is magnetic, that is provocative, that is transforming. Scorpio is the scorpion, and a scorpion has a sting to it. <laughs> and so while a scorpion is a symbol for change and transmutation, it is also a symbol for the pain that comes with it and not being afraid to be a trigger to others because sometimes that's how change is being provoked by being a trigger and Iniko is not afraid to to put themselves out there as an experience that some people are triggered by and most people are completely intrigued by. It's mysterious, it's magical, it's sacred, transformative. And that's the depth of Scorpio. Moon is in Taurus, which is the opposite sign of Scorpio. When we're born on a full moon, we have to find a way to balance out the way we express ourselves, which is our sun, and the way that we were raised, which is our moon, our family. Oftentimes we find the struggles between father, which is the sun, and mother, which is the moon. And you will be able to hear about that in Iniko's story and how they tell about the way that they were raised and the way that I had to break free. Again, we have that Scorpio of a breakthrough and transformation. They had to break free from the old systems and structures, which is represented by Taurus in their Taurus moon. So Taurus, on one hand, loves the structure, loves the tradition and the groundedness. And Scorpio is the one that breaks everything free. <laughs> So Iniko had to find their own way of how they can balance the groundedness, the connection to earth, the connection to humanity, to this mundane life, and then the connection to who they truly are on the deepest level. With the moon in the seventh house, Iniko naturally wants to be there for others. It's natural for them to absorb energies from other people. And so what really helps them is nature, is grounding, is keeping it simple in those moments. This is where their Taurus moon is really activated. And the more that Iniko allows themselves to be central, and explore their five senses and experiment with fashion, their style, honor their body, honor this physical world. And that helps them to ground down and be at peace, irregardless of whatever people think. Iniko's rising sign is in Libra. And Libra is a cardinal air sign which is the power of the mind. Iniko has an amazing mental capacity. Their rising sign is conjunct Mercury 
and Mercury is conjunct their Sun, so there is a lot of communication going on. There is a lot of a lot of thoughts and ideas that are coming through their mind. And storytelling is such a powerful part of their lives. With Libra rising, they are a natural artist, beauty lover, wanting to bring peace and harmony into this world, wanting to bring equality into this world, wanting to bring that love for authenticity into this world. Their chart ruler is Venus, which is in the 11th house in Virgo here. And the more that they focus on being of service and dedicating their art to something higher, bigger than themselves, the easier they channel the music, the art through them. And interestingly enough, Virgo, Virgo's modern ruler is Chiron and Iniko's Chiron is in 22 degree Libra. So Chiron is the wounded healer. So through the wounds, through the pain, through the suffering, Iniko's art and music is expanding. That's how they access their true talent, their true gift, their authentic way of doing art is actually through the healing process, through the shadows, facing the fears, facing the dark, and coming out of it. And in that process, in that Chiron journey, that's how they blossom in the world. Iniko is going to tell you about all of this in the interview and I'm excited for you to start feeling into those different archetypes and remembering them while you're going to be listening to this podcast episode. So that is it from me. Uh, If this sounds interesting to you, if you want to have your own inner blueprint reading, you can go onto my website, hannahchristensen.com. So click on work with me, inner blueprint and book your personal inner blueprint reading with me and as a beloved listener you also get a discount if you use the code sacred sis and so now let's dive into the fun interview with iniko so take a deep breath in relax and enjoy Oh, sacred sister, a kindred flame, may we light one another, from the ashes rise, oh, we rise, oh. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I'm inspired as fuck right now. <laughs> oh, me. Wow. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. Thank you to everyone and welcome who are here sitting with us for this episode of Sacred Sister Podcast. We have beautiful, beautiful vocal stylings <laughs> and this interview feature with Iniko, multidimensional creative catalyst. Welcome to Sacred Sister Podcast. Thank you for having me. This is my, I've never, um, I've never done a podcast before. So this, oh. this is my first, this is my podcast cherry. It's been popped. <laughs> Yay. That's so cool. We love that. We're so excited to have you here. You're such a, such a special soul, such a special being to have on. And the first uh, episode on season five Five all about freedom, liberation, out of the box, multidimensional self. <laughs> and here we are sitting with you, Iniko. It's perfect divine timing. So thank you so much for taking your time out of your day and diving into this experience with us. Oh, of course, of course. I'm excited. Ah, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm, excited. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the best place to be <laughs> right and no need to be nervous with us we're just we're your sisters we're here <laughs> just holding space just having fun today <laughs> yeah so I'm really curious to know like I just started coming across a lot of your Instagram concerts and just your Instagram handle and content in general in the last probably only like three months or something. So especially for the people who are being introduced to you for the very first time, can you give yeah. us a little bit of a layout about who you are and how you've come to be in the space? Yes, of course. Um, well, I am, as you know, Iniko. I have been singing all my life. Um, when I say I've, all my life, I literally mean all my life. Um, the earliest memory that I have of singing is when I was five years old. Um, I had my very first solo and it was in church for our Christmas pageant. And I remember I was so nervous. Like, I remember I just stared at the clock. I didn't look at anyone because we had, a, it was a pretty big church. So it was a very big congregation. So I just stared at the clock the whole time. I was like, I cannot mess up any note. Me at five years old, telling myself, I can't mess up any note. I have to make sure I'm holding in my diaphragm and stuff like that. Cause you know, at this, at this age too, I had started um, training as well. Classically training. My dad put me into this, uh, the, this choir called the Brooklyn Youth Chorus. They're very well known for like singing with like Elton John and singing for like the September 11th Memorial and things like that. Um, so I was I was classic classically training then too. So I, I pretty much knew what to do, but I was you know I was still a child. I was still so freaking scared, and I just remember I was like, Happy birthday, Jesus. <laughs> I remember and I remember people were like oh my god and when I was finished and you know it was only like I only literally sang the first verse I was finished literally everybody started cheering they were so loud you couldn't even hear the like the choir singing in the back because you know they came in right after and I was like Shh. I was literally telling them please be quiet like we're not done with our with our set yet please guys um but that was the first memory I had of singing ever and ever since then um it's always been a part of me music has always been a part of my life I come from a very musical family um my father uh he is in a reggae band I well it's him and a friend now but before before I was born he was in a reggae band my sister um is also a vocalist uh a vocal architect, producer. She's also my manager and my vocal coach. And my brother, he's a songwriter. Um, he's a rapper as well. So it, it, it really does run in the family. Um, now, as far as social media is concerned, um, I've been putting out, I've been posting myself singing since like, I would say like 2014, 2015. Um, I started really artistically training like for my artistry for how I want to be seen by other people 
um, in 2017, after I came back from Japan, I, I lived there for a year. Um, and when I came back, my sister at the same time, she was kind of like, I want to do something for indie artists. I want to create a space for indie artists in the New York City area because I just feel like there's no sense of camaraderie. There's no like community in um, indie art, especially towards musicians. And she was like, I think I'm gonna just like, I don't know, I wanna do like vocal classes. And I was like, I mean, okay, sure, I'll, I'll go, you know, and I've never, like I've been trained classically um, in groups and things like that. I've never done like one-on-one -on -one or anything like that. So I was still very nervous, but that became the catalyst for everything that you guys kind of see right now. I know like because of, you know, the society that we live in with social media, it kind of seems like we like artists kind of like come out of nowhere and they just they just been, you know, they just been popping and that is just not the case at all. <laughs> I go when I go back to my older videos I cringe so hard because literally all I was doing was just like yelling I had no confidence at all I, you could you could see the anxiety like exuding from me and I know that that definitely came from just the fact that um I had been told all of my life that my gift is not mine right I've been told all my life that my gift comes from God and that I am supposed to give it to other people so in that sense I'm very used to giving um, I'm very used to singing in front of an audience uh, the hard part was actually believing that the gift was mine actually that actually believing that um I was worth it, that I was enough to give this gift. And um, it took a lot of training vocally, mentally, spiritually. Um, and I, I just kept posting my covers. I, I was very, I was more active on Instagram than anywhere else. Um, I was always just posting my covers, literally like around this time last year, like I, I only had like 2,000, 3,000 followers, you know, like just, I was any, I don't want to say normal Joe, but that's who I was. You know, I, I had people that knew me because they um, had seen me perform because I was performing a lot, you know, before um, the lockdown, before the pandemic, I was always trying to find somewhere to perform, to practice being in front of people, in front of different people, because I was always so used to singing in front of the same congregation, right, in church. Um so I was always singing somewhere, always had a gig somewhere. And I always made sure I was like, can some, hey, can you film me? Cause I want to post this on Instagram. So like, that's what I was always doing. I was always posting on Instagram and it wasn't till um, the pandemic hit actually 2020. It's very weird. Like the first half of 2020, um, I was still training, still in, tr still training with my sister. Uh, I was doing artist boot camps. I did like three artist boot camps in 2020. Um, and no, sorry, I did three artist boot camps altogether. 2020, I did two, I believe. And I, in July, uh, no, the end of June, I had my very first breakup. And it was, I mean, I know everybody, you know, everybody, uh, a lot of people, many people have experienced their a breakup, their first breakup. I don't know, but for me, maybe it is because I, the when I feel things, it's on a completely different level. I, I wasn't okay. Um, I can say, honestly, I was suicidal. I've, I've dealt with, I've dealt with suicidal thoughts um, all my life, uh, but I was okay right before then. And then that happened and I immediately just, I just felt like I wasn't worthy of living. And, you know, uh, when something so traumatic like that happens, if you don't know how to cope healthily, you're gonna do something really stupid, which is what I did. I did something very stupid and I ended up hurting the person that I loved the most, I ended up hurting myself. And it was very, very, very hard for me to um, want to really do anything other than cry and think about ending it all. And 
that was around this time last year. And I think that's probably why I told you before we got onto this podcast, why I woke up with so much anxiety. I think my body remembers the feeling and like I didn't. And then I looked at the date and I was like, ah, today was the day that I did that thing that I shouldn't have done, but I did it anyway. And um, around this time last year, I, I just, I was posting like crazy, like that. I think that's the beautiful thing about pain. Like, especially as artists, as creatives, we can transmute it and use it for something else. I was writing so much. I was posting covers like crazy to the point where my sister literally reached out to me and she was like, are you okay? (laughs) Because it wasn't normal. Like it wasn't, um, it wasn't what I would usually do. And I said, no, I'm not, I, I need help. And um, I had my first therapy session that I'd ever had in, had in life. And um, I'm still with her to this day. And I'm, I'm so grateful to that because if it wasn't for those sessions, if it wasn't for the people in my life that reached out to me um, when I was feeling so, 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 so alone, I don't think I would be here today. I don't think you guys would have ever actually happened upon me on social media. However, I am grateful for the pain. I am grateful for the shadows that I finally decided to face because if I didn't integrate that part of me, I don't think I would have so much confidence in who I am right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And it, what, it, what, what, when was it? So, okay. So I'm posting, I'm posting, I'm posting, right? Um, 2020 ends, it's January. Uh, I think it was, I think me and my sister had this, we had a meeting together and, you know, she wanted us to, she wanted to talk about my goals. That's, you know, we all have New Year's goals, I feel, and February comes and it's like, I see that enough, I haven't done anything towards these goals. Okay, cool. I'm just going to try again next year. I don't know what it was. Yes, I do. It was all the shit that I went through. I told my sister exactly what I wanted. I said, I want to find my tribe. I want to find people that will look at me and see me and, you know, not, um, not be fearful of who I am because they don't understand it. They don't understand me. Um, And for most of 2020 and before that in the relationship that I was in and the people that I was around I realize now that um, a lot of them didn't actually like me and they kind of projected that onto me and I being at the time a people pleaser I muted myself to make them more comfortable Um, so I told her that I want to be my most authentic self and in turn I want to make the most authentic music and art that I can make because I know that people there are people out there that need this there are people out there that need to hear this that need to hear me because they might be feeling the same way too Mm -hmm. so we set out some goals and January came and I I actually have the poster up right now um one of my glasses so I could read it to you because I am blind hold on um (laughs) so here I have Anika's 2021 goals one music video, um, at least $5,000 to fund that music video, an album, and then an EP. There were a couple more, um, but those are the ones that I really wanted to like focus on for the most part. And uh, I knew that the only, like, at least for me, the only way I knew how to get funds was through music. Um, I did have a job at at the beginning of the pandemic, but I lost it like most people. And I just didn't really see the need to spend so much time doing something that I do not enjoy because after that, I would be so tired and didn't have the energy to actually do what I loved. Um, So January, sorry, January came and um, I just, I started planning. I, I, started figuring out like what it is that I need to do like I I noticed how quickly people can go viral on TikTok and it's so funny because before I was like yo I'm not getting a TikTok TikTok is trash I this app (laughs) is so garbage especially when it comes to people of color and black people 
And I was like, no. But then I was like, you know what? I think it's really just about like, I don't like when people say social media is just bad in general. No, it's about how you use it. It's about the intention that you have behind it. So my intent was to find people like me, find people that just wanted to hear music that made them feel something, something animalistic, something that has always been inside of them that just needs to be awoken again. Um, and it was, I, there was I, I remember at one point I was like posting like maybe seven times a day on TikTok every single day. Oh. And um, my sister, she does these, um, you know, she has a, this, I was telling you this uh, artist development company called The Voice Box. And she does these consistency challenges pretty much where for two weeks, um, we all have to post consistently every single day on at least three platforms. Um, and it has to be in correlation to our artistry. So it can be a cover, it can be a photo shoot, it can be a vlog, anything like that. So I decided to do covers and vlogs somewhat. And my theme was my inspirations. Um, and of those covers that I did was a cover of Decode by Paramore. Um, I wanted and... to talk about that. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, tell us that. the story. <laughs> we're segueing, we're segueing, yes. So, um, it's crazy. I literally like I was in my basement when I recorded that. Um, I set up the mic and all that stuff by the grace of the universe. My dad gifted me all of the equipment that you guys see me uh, use because wow, it's expensive. Um, <laughs> uh, so I set everything up downstairs and um, Paramore, Haley Williams specifically, um, her voice, her, her vocals, one of my biggest inspirations growing up. Um, so I chose to do Decode because Decode was the first song that I heard by Paramore because of Twilight. And um, it's crazy. Uh, those, so that recording that you hear and the video that you see, that that was happening in real time. So it's not pre-recorded. Um, and I hated the recording. Like I hated it. When I listened to it, I was like, wow, this is trash. <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> like this at all. And I, that's, that's one thing I'm trying to get over. I'm, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. There's a lot of things that I, that I record um, that you guys will just never hear because wow. Um, but I told myself, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just post it. Like maybe it's just me, like whatever. So I posted it on TikTok and I posted like two other videos. So that wasn't the first video that went viral. The first video that went viral was just me, was me singing or me lip syncing to my, at the time, unreleased single Luna. Um, but I'll, I'll get into that first. So Luna gained a lot of traction. I had maybe like eh, 800, 900 followers on TikTok. And then I woke up and I had 9,000 and I was like, what's happening? Um, so it, <laughs> it's great that, you know, that kind of happened right when I was doing the consistency challenge. So I was just like, well, this is great because I already have the content that I need. Cool. So then I posted the Haley Williams thing. I was not, again, like, I don't expect to go viral. Like that's never why I post. I think like when you post with the intention to go viral, chances are you're not going to because the concept of virality, whatever the word is, it's like, it's so like, it, it, it really is up to chance. It really is up to whoever might be looking at your phone right now. Like, I truly believe that it is, it, it has to do with divine timing. So like, for me, I was like, yo, my intention is to just post this and whoever needs to see it, sees it, whatever. Man, literally like the next day, I was at my sister's house when I post, when I had posted it. The next day I got like a notification in my TikTok and it was like, um, good die young, do edit your video. Good die young is um, Haley Williams um, dye company. Um, I actually have their dye in my hair right now. Um, and I was like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so I go and yeah. I check it and I see it's Haley Williams <laughs> literally <laughs> react. This is, so this is my first I, like interaction in a sense with any kind of anyone you know like that is a musician who many many people know and I literally like cried like I was just crying for like hours like on and off because I, I I couldn't believe it because it, it wasn't it wasn't just the fact that like she 
loved it. It was the fact that so many other people loved it too. And Mm -hmm. I think that really boosted my confidence because I was always so scared, you know, as a, as a black person, um, queer black person, you know, uh, in our community, there is a lot of, um, backlash especially when I was growing up when it came to like the kind of music that I listened to you know it'd be like oh this that's like white people music like why are you listening to that like oh why do you talk like that like I always got comments like that all the time so that was one of the reasons why I was really scared to post that as well um and lo and behold you know it, it it ended up going viral on Twitter too. And the majority of people that loved it were black people. And I'm about to cry, but like, it is, it's just a different feeling to know that your, your kin folk, your people like fuck with you in that way. So I was just so happy and so encouraged to keep going. I had to keep going. So I told myself, this is, this is it. This is, this is what I've been looking for this whole time, okay. So I still have my goals though, right? So one of my goals was to find people who will listen to my voice, not because I'm not, of, not out of obligation, but because they love it, because they want to. Okay, I guess that goal is done. Cool, great. Um, once I surpassed um, 10,000 followers on TikTok, I uh, applied for the creator fund. So now it's like, wow, now I don't have to worry too much about finances granted it is still a worry it's still a struggle but we are manifesting to struggle no more amen um but you know uh based just based on the engagement that you get on your videos things like that per day you get funds from that so I was like all right wow cool so now you like the music video everything kind of seems more in reach now and I and I really think like like thought wise, like as long as your thoughts are aligned with what it is that you want, everything seems a little bit easier to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, to to reach rather. Um, so that happened. And I just, I kind of like took a step back from Instagram because um, I kind of realized that with Instagram, it, it really, it wasn't doing what I needed it to do. And TikTok, just as a platform it was like okay this is what I need I need to find people outside of my little group of people right now that support me but it's it's not enough you know like and on top of that I wanted to crowdfund as well but you can't crowdfund with the same like 2,000 3,000 people um so one day I decided to just go live on TikTok because I didn't know that was a thing but I, it was, I think it was like in March or something. Um, I decided to go live on TikTok and I, I didn't know what to do. I was like, I'm just saying, you know, it was like 20, 30 people in my live. And I was just like singing, um, I was singing acapella cause I didn't have like a extra, uh, piece of device or anything like that. And people really enjoyed it. And I was like, okay, great. And I would always see these things like pop up on the screen. I was like, what is that? Like, what are these things? And after doing research, I was like, oh, I see that these are gifts okay and I could wait these become this comes money <laughs> okay cool because you know with the after the pandemic like a lot of indie artists like kind of just stopped singing because where are we gonna sing like there's no gigs there's nothing happening and if there is a gig there's there's risk of catching COVID so like me you know I I live with someone who is immuno compromised myself as well so like I didn't do anything I didn't go anywhere I just stayed in the house and I was just like there has to be a way for me to reach people and boom it just like it just happened so I was like okay cool maybe I can make this like a thing like I don't know so I kind of just um you know I don't I always say this on my lives I do not play keys I'm not a pianist that's not what I do right but um I was just like, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure it out. Maybe I'm just gonna play a little something. And I figured out the chords to each of my songs and I just I sang all of them one night. And that night I think I had like 200 viewers and I was like, whoa, this is so crazy. So I paired that, you know, me going live pretty much every night. Um, and then me posting just covers of songs that I have always enjoyed, that I've always loved, that had a special place in my heart. Um, and it, it seemed that people really loved it too. And, um, it wasn't till like, 
what cover was it? I'm trying to remember. I think it was highest in the room. And it wasn't really a cover. It was a reimagined cover because I, I rewrote to it. Uh, highest in the room by Travis Scott. And I, I did it like acapella. Again, I don't expect these things to go viral, but that one went, it went, it, it caught a lot of people's eyes and it caught a lot of people's eyes who like I follow. And it was like, well, this is a really weird, like what's happening? Yeah. Uh, my friend sent me like a Twitter, a tweet. And he was like, I literally love this dude. And he just duetted your video. And I was like, what do you mean? And I saw it and I was like, please not him dancing. This is so cool. Like, this is so dope. And that, that made me realize that um, I, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, you know, um, up until this day, you know, I don't, I don't post as much as I did on TikTok. And that's only because I, I personally just, I don't think like, yes, TikTok helps a lot um, when it comes to, you know, creators and artists. I do believe it's a really great platform to use if you want to get your music heard. Um, but it, it isn't really, uh, what's the word? Like, uh, uh, the, the, the best word I can find is ethical because creators, artists, creatives, we're not supposed to give that much, create that much in a, such a short span of time. Um, because with the TikTok algorithm, you have to post mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. just to be seen, just for one of those seven videos to be seen and I mean I was doing that in the beginning but now I'm kind of just like this is crazy like you will be burned out you will feel like you aren't doing enough when in actually when act in actuality you're doing too much mm -hmm. you're actually doing enough and then some and um I actually I took a little break from TikTok and I started to give more of my energy to Instagram and um, that was only because like a lot of people started finding my TikTok and then they would follow me on Instagram. And I was like, whoa, well, okay. Cause you know, the Instagram community is a, it's a different kind of energy to TikTok. I feel like the people are a little bit more older and um, I, I like that. I love that. And so I started to put my energy into to Instagram now. And the video that went viral on Instagram was um, uh, my reimagined rendition of this dance hall song by Skilly Bang called Crocodile Teeth. I love dance hall. I'm, I'm Jamaican. Um, dance hall is whoop, love that, love that. And you know, I never really heard dance hall like ethereal dance hall. You know, dance hall that makes you think. That dance hall that takes you to another place, another space that feels like you're ascending. You know, so I wanted to try something different, and that's that's always my goal when it comes to my rewrites um that's why I do them it's it's for practice you know because I don't ever want to be one genre like that's not me I, I can't be one genre it's not possible all my life I've listened to so many different kinds of music so many different types of artists that like me I am an amalgam of all of those things and then some so I decided to rewrite that and that one went viral and then I ended up putting it putting it out with my sister and my brother and a lot of people on Instagram started to find me and what made me super happy was that it was a lot of Jamaican people and you know in Jamaica being queer oh you know it's not something that you openly talk about um, because it is, you know, people people get killed for that um, in in the Caribbean. It's not it's not super accepted. I mean, respectfully, it's not really accepted anywhere. Um, but in the Caribbean, a lot of in in a lot of those places, in a lot of those spaces, it's it's not it's it's dangerous rather. Um, which is why I was I was very scared to put out that cover. Like I was terrified because you know I'm I'm not just black. I'm not just queer. I'm also genderless. I also don't identify as a man or a woman. So I was afraid of how I would be received. And you know, lo and behold, there were Jamaicans that loved me and are such loyal dedicated fans to me and and this isn't to say that I don't know you know people Jamaican people in my life that accept me for who I am I do I do but it's it's not a lot you know it's it's not a lot of them so that's why I'm so I'm always so grateful 
when I see somebody say, oh, I'm from Jamaica and I love this, like, I love you. Or I, as somebody had DM'd me and they were like, hi, I just want you to know that I'm Jamaican, I live in Jamaica and I'm non-binary and I'm black. And I just wanted to say like, thank you so much for existing. Mm. And that made me cry because that's a big deal, you know? So I told myself that I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna keep pushing the mold um, because with, as far as dance hall is concerned, it's, it's a genre that doesn't really change or evolve rather. They, they like to keep that same blueprint, um, reggae dance hall. So I, I want to push that mold when it comes to that genre, any genre in general. Um, and we're here today. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. What a stream of consciousness right there. <laughs> Oh, what is your story 40 I, minutes later <laughs> I love it it's like you've answered so many things that we wanted to ask you yeah. so oh my god like, wow just, I'm sorry you, but I'm glad no, at the same no, time don't apologize no. sorry it was it was perfect beautiful thank you so much for sharing all of this and there are so of many course. things that I want to like piggy bank on but yeah um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I just love that you just mentioned um, is your genderlessness. And I love how there is an Instagram post where you say, they ask you, are you a boy or girl? And you answer, I'm an experience. Yes. It was just this morning. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. I was like, I... segue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, ooh, ooh. you know, um, I, it's funny because like, that's 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 not all there is to me like my genderlessness is really just a facet of my multifacetedness um yeah. but unfortunately in the society that we live in people think that that that, that that's all there is to me and um mm. or they just don't know you know and I get misgendered <laughs> Ooh, like I thought it was bad before now it's crazy. I literally get misgendered. Maybe I would say like thousands of comments like a day. And I, um, you did, know, I, I obviously I can't. What happened? Uh, I wonder when did you find out that mm -hmm. when did you start identifying? It's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I think I kind of always knew. Yeah that I was that I was different mm. and I never knew um why uh at a very young age I knew that I liked girls um I knew that I liked boys well mm, well I started liking boys because people told me that I was supposed to so mm the different it was a little bit of a different experience with that but as far as girls was concerned I remember my very first best friend she was a girl and I always used to think oh my god like you're so pretty like why do I feel this way like I don't understand I was like five six and that was my very first memory of liking someone um as far as my identity was concerned I just I always just felt different from everyone and it didn't really help that my dad like he didn't dress like he didn't like me wearing like super girly clothes so like the clothes wouldn't necessarily be boyish they would just you know again clothes don't have gender but for the sake of this conversation they would just really be genderless like I would be wearing like t-shirts like baggy t-shirts and like baggy jeans or like shorts and like just a normal shirt like I even though I, I wanted to wear them like I really did um but he was just like nope you are gonna wear this polo shirt from the fucking children's place which I hate that place now wow um I wanted to wear, I wanted to wear like I don't know if you remember the store um it had different names but I remember it as limited too and like their stuff was so cute and girly and like I just had to dream of myself in those things because my dad would never buy those things for me like I I asked if I could at, at the very least have a subscription to like their magazine <laughs> so <laughs> I, like let me just look at the clothes please literally I would get a magazine every month and I'll be like yo this is mad cute I just feel like 
why can't I have this? Um, but um, <laughs> back back to the conversation. Um, you know, yeah, growing up, I, I didn't really wear super girly clothes, and I also went to a private school, so like I wore a uniform, so I, I didn't really have the um, I didn't have the opportunity to express my gender identity through clothes in the way that I truly wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, I went to a super, super conservative Christian school. They are called Independent Fundamental Baptists. Uh, mm-hmm. If you ever hear that name, run. Um, <laughs> I went to a school like that and um, it ended up being a situation where the gender norm was forced onto me now. Mm-hmm. And it made me extremely, extremely uncomfortable. At the time, I couldn't understand why, because it's like, well, isn't this what you wanted? Didn't you want to dress more girly? But it wasn't even more girly. It was like a nun. Like I, you know, the skirts had to be below your knee. You couldn't have any neckline could not be showing. Like you couldn't even show your shoulder. You couldn't show your back, nothing like that. Um, I was always getting called into the office for like my clothes, for my, for my dress. And um, I think it was after I graduated um, and I finally, finally, after so many years, um, I turned 18. I'd that was when I could finally actually express myself when it came to clothes. And I think it was through that that I realized that um, I was non-binary. Um, I go by genderless now because at this point, I just, I don't even want to be perceived. <laughs> like at this point, I am kind of just like, wait a minute, literally every single concept went around gender was created by us. Mm. No. No, I, I don't want to be what you tell me to be. Like, I am who I am because that's who I am. Like, I wasn't born a woman. I wasn't born a man. I was just born with what's in between my legs and that's it. And suddenly I you can dictate who I'm supposed to be, how I'm supposed to act, what I'm supposed to wear. That doesn't sound fun. And I started, um, I think I took, a soci- I took a sociology class when I was in Japan, like a gender studies class. And that really opened my eyes. I, I def- whoever is listening to this, if you've never taken a sociology class or a gender studies class, I really encourage you to. Like, I, I think every single person should because it, it really starts to challenge the way we think and the way that we have been thinking because the truth of the matter is that those thoughts are not our own mm. and when I you know started noticing that um I started doing research and um I stumbled upon the term non-binary and I remember reading the description and I just started crying um this, it was my freshman year of college I started crying because I I identified so much with it like somebody who identifies outside of the gender binary, outside of the gender norm. And I was like, yeah, yes, this is me because I only identified as a woman because I was perceived as one. A lot of the times I had more masculine energy and I was told that I shouldn't and I didn't understand why. And now, at that time, it, it made so much sense. So I was like, I'm non-binary. This, this, this is it. Like I'm. This is this is who I am. This is a part of who I am. As I said, a facet of who I am. And as the days pass, as years pass, not that many years. You know, it's 2021 now. That was 2017. Mm-hmm. As years passed, I, I really did find myself in that. Like I, I found myself outside of these two binaries I think just the binary system in general was created by oppressors it was created by people so that you you have to choose and if you choose outside of this you are in other you are something other than that and you are bad you're not good and you know I I I grew up in a very religious household I went to a very religious school and I saw those binaries enforced every single day and it, it didn't do any good all it did was to people's mental spiritual growth and I didn't like that I was so depressed when I was going to that school I didn't I couldn't put a word to the feeling but now I can I was extremely depressed going to that school and there were so many times where I was just like man why can't I just 
be? You know, why can't, why, why is it such an issue for people um, when somebody decides to be something other than what we know, what we think we know? Um, so yeah, 2017, that was wow. the year that, that I'm non-binary. And I, I didn't come out to anyone per se, um, but when my friends would ask me or, or, you know, if they would say she or, oh yeah, she's this, she's that. And I would be like, oh, actually. And it was funny because like, once I found that definition and people started, when they would call me she, it made me feel weird. Like mm. it, it, the best way I can describe it is um, when somebody uh, says something offensive to you says something mean to you and you don't say anything but you feel it in your gut that's that's how it felt for me and that's how I knew that this wasn't just to me like this wasn't some trend as a lot of people call it it wasn't like a gen z trend or like a a feeling no this was real this is who I am and when somebody addresses me as she as miss as woman I want people to understand that you are literally addressing me outside of who I am you are calling me out of my identity and if somebody did that to you you would also feel the same way the situation is though that it doesn't happen to you because you are privileged in that sense you are perceived as a woman and you identify as a woman you are perceived as a man and you identify as a man so you don't Mm -hmm. know what this feels like you don't know what it feels like for people to address you as this person to see you as something that you're not to be perceived as something that you are not Mm. that was me my entire life Mm. and when people finally started to see me for who I am which only really just started happening Mm. wow it feels like bliss it feels euphoric it feels like you're on drugs because it's it's like everything kind of just starts to click everything starts Mm -hmm. to connect and it's like yes this is this is where I'm supposed to be this is who I am supposed Mm -hmm. to be and the thing is you know like Mm -hmm. tomorrow I could say I identify as a woman the point is that gender just in general it is we created it like we literally like we literally said you have a vagina, so you're a woman, and you have a penis, so you're a man. You have both, just gonna not even, not even talk to you. You aren't, you have to, you have to choose. You can be both, even though they have a uterus and testicles. Like, I think people kind of forget about intersex people, which is crazy to me. And you know, it's very funny. I remember in my class, in my Christian school, they were talking about that. Like they, they were talking about transgender people because every chance that they got, they would spew their homophobic rhetoric mm-hmm. all the time, which was another reason why I was so depressed. Cause you know, I, I knew that I liked girls and I'm being told every single day that this is not okay and that you're gonna go to hell for it. So I remember in one of the classes, they were like, oh, you know, God made, made you this way. God made you with, Um, the genitals that you have so if you have this then you're a man and if you have this then you're a woman I remember I raised my hand I was like so what about intersex people and the teacher was like what do you mean what is what what's intersex and I was like intersex people have both sexual organs um and there's also like people that have uteruses that have high levels of testosterone Mm -hmm. it's actually a lot of cis women in our population so like what about them are they not women there are also women that um people people with uteruses that identify as women who can't have children I know you said that you if you don't have if you can't bear children then you're not a woman so are they not women then (laughs) and I remember he got so angry he was so angry it actually made me scared and I don't remember what he said, but I just remember I wanted to cry because he made me feel so small Mm. and he ended the class early and um, they had brought me like into the dean's office and they said, you know, like, 
you can't question <laughs> what is. You can't question what already is. You can't question the truth. And I'm like, but it's it's not a question. Like it's it's actually the truth. So like I don't I don't know what do you like y'all are the circular reasoning thing is really getting to y'all and I don't know. Like this isn't me. This is y'all. This is what y'all are preaching. This isn't the truth though. But like okay. Um, but yeah, it was it was in 2017 and I came out like officially you know um on instagram like 2018 i had never celebrated pride or anything like that but it was pride month and um you know i wanted to i i felt confident enough to actually say that this is who i am and i got so much support from it and it made me really happy at, at first i said she i said you know my pronouns are she them but um after a while i realized that i i really i didn't identify with um she her pronouns really at all because truthfully like my I don't I don't even necessarily like express my true gender identity through my clothes I wear the clothes that I do because I just think I look really good in them like I love su looking super super feminine and then I also just love looking like both like I don't I don't think um, you necessarily need to use clothes to show who you are. However, I know that that is what many people do and it's what I do sometimes. But um, for me, like, you know, I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, you look like a woman, you look like a girl. So like, what am I, like, you know, what am I supposed to do? I'm like, you just don't, don't assume yeah. who I am. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. Like, people will say, oh, but they, them is plural, which is what I get all the time. They, them is plural. Like you're not two people. Honestly, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To you, I am. I'm actually seven people. Like I'm, I'm seven people. So address <laughs> me as such. Thank you. Thank you so much because y'all getting on my nerves. Like the yeah. fact that people debate who I am in the comments, like every day is crazy to me. And I just be reading them like, wow, that's, you must have nothing better to do because, wow, like, this is a very long thread. Like, you don't have a job? I don't understand. <laughs> like, it's crazy. <laughs> I, yeah. I love how much you've been just like, yeah. like you said, pressing the mold. And, yeah. you know, you're coming from such a Christian, such a conservative background. And very. you're just very. like, okay, I'm going to be just all out of the box and I'm just going to be uniquely who I am and do what I need to do and what I'm here to do. To. So I love that. You have to. Like, that's how you survive. You cannot, you like, that, not even survive. That's how you live. You survive, you survive by being what everybody else tells you to be. You start living when you finally start thinking for yourself. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes, I'm, I'm so in love with this entire transmission. And I'm also like, okay, I know I have another maximum 10 minutes that I can be here. And we have just a couple more things that we really, really wanted to ask you. So mm -hmm. I want to comment on just this beautiful, these beautiful transmissions that you've been releasing. And it's like, I witness you and you feel so alien in the very best way, in the way that it seems like it is so time for that I feel like so many people are thirsting for, like literally dehydrated <laughs> as fuck. And they're just like, that's how I feel, at least. Mm -hmm. I am speaking from my own experience and stumbling upon your artistry has just been such a like quenching, like oh, a wow. quenching experience. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you about that because there's this song that you do 333 that I wrote down the second verse of it and I was going to read it, but then I said, oh, well, since they like to sing, maybe you would want to do that little verse, but I'm prepared, mm -hmm. to, sing, or yeah. prepared to say it as well. And I wanted to the say to you, I think with verse. the I think with the piano, since earlier, Zoom has this thing where either it wants to pick up the piano or your voice. So I think it has a hard time like mm -hmm. getting both of them. Yeah. And I okay, just- Okay, so I could turn the piano down just so I can hear it. Okay. And then let's mute us too. Okay. Right, yeah. And right where it says star children to-, to Yeah. Out, and that's, we can cut this little block out so the audience doesn't know it's coming. <laughs> I got you. <clears throat> I got you. Ah, uh, so second verse goes, um, 
Star children, I got news for you. This is a 3D world, it's corrupt and blue. They want your soul, they want your heart and mind. They want to break us down and kill our kind. They are gone. They are pale. They created the matrix, created a living hell. For those with skin, light, light, and gold. They know where the animals were cannibals. They don't want us up at three in the morning. Oh. Yeah, that's the second verse. Yes. Oh. Oh. Goosebumps. So oh, so good. Beautiful. So the second, do you want me to just talk about it just a little bit? I know you say you have other questions. Yeah, so what I was going to state about that is that so much of your music that I hear is filled with this really mystic wisdom and it's so cosmic in mm. a very like approachable way, like really mm. easy to receive. It expands our minds to conce- concepts that maybe we haven't thought about in the way that you present them. And I wanted to ask, like, why do you feel the nature of your music is hitting home with so many people in this time? You know... I've thought, I've thought about this a lot. I, I think that, um, I think it's hitting a lot of people because a lot of people have felt alienated mm-hmm. and haven't ne- don't necessarily know why. And I, I really and truly believe that people like that, like me, like yourself, um, feel, have felt this way because the truth of the matter is that we, uh, we were born here, but we are like, we're not from here. Like we literally live in space. We are a big (laughs) floating rock in space. And as a kid, I always used to think of those things all the time. And I, you know, I've had so many experiences myself with just things that don't like experiences that just don't make sense, like to the, the human psyche which is these days what I've been saying is that I reject being human because even that in and of itself is a concept like we are so much more than human we have been here for so long what were we before we were we you know and um it's it's interesting because like those concepts seem very complicated but can also be very simple so so that that verse in particular um in, in particular, uh, Star Children, I got news for you. This is a 3D world. It's corrupt and blue. Um, I, I definitely believe that the reality that we live in, we did not create it. It's like, yes, we created it, but it was here before we were here. And um, they want your soul. They want your heart and mind. They want to break us down and kill. Who is they? Who is they? They is every single person who, um, what's the word? Uh enforces these constructs, enforces these binaries to the point where they feel the need to kill people, to hurt people, to spread hate and misinformation. Um, And then it says, uh, they want your soul, they want your heart and mind, they want to break us down and kill our kind. Now this part here, they are ghosts, they are pale, they created the matrix, they created a living hell. For those with skin, like night and gold. This is literally, I'm gonna keep it a stack with you. This is about white people. It's about white people. It's about the European people, the European folks that decided that it was best to go to these indigenous lands, to go to Africa, to go to the Carib islands and spread their Christianity and kill anybody who was against it and enslave us. I that that's that's really what it's about and I firmly believe that people have you have to you you cannot just ignore what happened Mm -hmm. you you can't you can't just say oh well it happened but no it didn't just happen it happened and then because of it look at the state of the world now every single issue hung world hunger um everything like the oceans dying you can literally trace it back to the transatlantic slave trade like people became greedy like 
they were so greedy. They, they, they wanted more. They wanted to conquer more. And because of this, the earth is literally dying because indigenous people, they, they can't even take care of the water because we're killing it. I'm sorry, I'm about to cry, but like, it's the truth. And I, I, that is my, I do believe that that is one of my purposes on this earth. I, I have to spread the truth. You, you, you can't walk around not knowing, not understanding why the earth, why our reality is what it is right now. And I need people to understand that they can shape the reality the moment they start to think for themselves. Yes. Yes. I, I love, I love you. <laughs> I love the way you express yourself. Um, you know, you're such a star seed. And I was wondering if you are connected with other dimensional living. Um, other times you were saying we're so much more than human. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things I actually just made this little thing for my denim jacket. And I mm -hmm. on a spaceship and it says more than human. <laughs> oh my God! Because it's like, it's literally like that, you know, we've had lifetimes as other beings, not yep. just as a human. And I yep. wonder, is there, is there a certain star family that you feel especially connected with? Or how is that connection for you? Honestly? Okay, so I'm going to talk about this experience. I don't like I, I spoke about it a little bit on my live last night, only for like a little bit, though. Um, so it was when I really started delving into, I think it was my true spiritual awakening. Um, you know, I've always had some form of connection to the divine because, you know, I grew up in church and stuff like that. Um, but I, I stopped practicing, practicing religion after I graduated from um, that Christian school. And I started to, you know, I wanted to find myself. And um, it was in finding myself that I found God because I realized that God exists within us. It mm -hmm they exist within all of us. Um, but the, the starseed situation, the, the alien situation, woo, I, okay, so I was on the bus and at the time I was meditating a lot. Like I was meditating like every day and I don't, because of this, I don't meditate as much as I used to. Um, I truly think that meditation, it, it, It depends on the person, like it, it, what the kind of meditation you do. I think the best form of meditation for me is um, like it, it, as far as like my hips, like dancing, that kind of meditation. That's very meditative for me. When I really meditate, I like I I am a one of my spiritual my spiritual guides, uh, a friend of mine. They said that I I travel like I I go to different dimensions when I meditate, when I dream. So I need to I have to wear like an anklet around my um my ankle because uh, an onyx anklet to ground me because I, my soul will literally just go somewhere and wow. might come back and I'll pick up something else. And that I was like, it just makes so much sense because like I was, when I was meditating a lot, I was also getting held down a lot. Um, or like I got, a, I had a lot of sleep paralysis, which I, I still deal with like to this day, but not, not as much. Um, but so back to the experience, you said star seed. I think, I think the, the alien race that I, I might probably be from is like serious Syrian um why do I think this so okay. so I <laughs> was on the bus <laughs> no because like I tell this story and like truly like I don't like I can't I really like I, I can't just make this up you know like it really did happen to me and like that's why I just feel like there are just some things that you have to experience, you know? So I was on the bus and I forgot to meditate that day. And um, I was listening to solfragio frequencies, which I will never listen to again, but I was listening to them because I was like, oh, I, wanted, I wanted to try different frequencies, see what it'll do. So, you know, I'm listening to the frequency, I'm breathing in and out. It don't, it don't take me long to, for my soul to like leave my body so it was boop, it was gone right boom so <laughs> my eyes are closed and the first thing I see is um the eye of the universe I see the eye of the universe and this is all um in like flashes so I see the eye of the universe then I see like a, a very bright 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 light so when I would meditate I see things I see so many things I saw a very bright light and in front of it were two figures so it was like this and it was two figures <clears throat> And it scared me. I was, I was like, whoa, whoa, what is this? Like, what's happening? So I think I kind of like scared myself out of wherever 
I was and I went somewhere else. So it was like I was in this dimension, but I wasn't. And my eyes were open, but they were closed, right? So like in this 3D realm, my eyes were closed, but wherever I was, they were wide open. Mm -hmm. And something, I don't know why, something told me to lift my hands. And I lift my hands up and I kid you not, I swear on my life, I, my hands were scaled. Like they, they had scales on, like it was, like it was as if I was looking at the hands of a siren, of a, a mermaid. They were, it was blue and purple and pink and they were webbed and it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> like I was like, oh, what the fuck? And I literally like woke up and I don't know if you guys have ever felt this way when you meditate, but I felt so heavy. Like I felt like, like I was here, but my soul wasn't back yet. And I was just like, nah, what the, what, like what just happened? And from that day forward, I was like, yeah, yeah, everything, everything, everything we think we know, we don't. Yes. And that's just that. So I, I think I'm probably from that star, but I also feel like, I don't know, like, I feel like we, all of us have different aspects of each yeah. of these because like you know I was watching like this video I was like oh whichever one might uh resonate with you and I was like wow they all do <laughs> yeah. like they all do in some way like um Andromedons like they that resonates with me even though I'm I'm small like I feel like my face um might have those as those aspects as well or like from Liren as well like I love cats I love yeah. cats I love them so much but like I'm allergic to them and it's the saddest thing like it's such a sad relationship that we have because like I'll see a cat and you know they'll be meowing and I'm like well I want to pet you but I can't like why like reptilians like I definitely feel like I might be a reptilian because like people will be like why are your hands always so cold yes it might be the lack of iron and the fact that I'm anemic but also maybe I was a reptilian before like I don't know I also love reptiles I also just love animals in general like there's that too but I again like I just feel like we each of us have aspects of those because you know we yes our race has been around for a very long time and I can only assume that they have been around for much longer than that yeah. so uh, who's to say that they didn't integrate you know so mm -hmm. um but I think the one that is strongest is definitely from the star of Sirius Syrian mm -hmm. for sure yeah. And people are also always calling me a siren. And I'm like, please don't call me that. <laughs> because like, wow, sirens aren't actually like, they will definitely kill you. Like, because you know, those stories, like those are like stories that they would tell like your children yeah. in like the West but Indies, again, you know. Right again, those are stories. Those are stories made up. No, no, no. You know well, what I mean? They, so. they would, they tell them that so like they don't go outside. Like you're not supposed to go outside in the nighttime to the water um because because of that because they will they will take you like they will sing you will hear them and you'll be like oh my god they sound so pretty what is that and you'll go you'll put one foot in the water that's it it's yeah. done but as Finish. you know as you know those stories there are mm -hmm. there is an agenda behind mm -hmm. a lot of the stories mm -hmm. that is being told to us <laughs> so true. I love I love that you're I love that you've been like feeling deeper into that and that's like yeah. that was a spontaneous astral travel right there so it, that it was, was beautiful yeah, yeah wonderful so we had we would love to talk to you for the next three hours <laughs> All day. <laughs> because it's so juicy and it's so beautiful but I also want to honor Brit's time and we got you know gotta wrap it up um so we just have like for our guests three last questions that we ask mm -hmm. and you can just like really simple stated um short gotcha. answers you know just quick um what comes up for you so mm -hmm. those and are wait, called our sacred questions Sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to say too that you are so not alone in those experiences. Hannah and I have had multiple alien experiences. Hannah assists Good people you know. in traveling astrally wow. as a profession, as a hypnotherapist. Amazing. And we're excited to share our alien experiences on the Patreon that we're going to be recording tomorrow for this episode too. <laughs> yes. And okay, I actually have a few clients that are also were sirens and and, wow. and peril lifetimes. So 
I'm gonna well, talk more about that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. So, sacred questions. Number one is, what does sacred mean to you? Mm. No. I want a simple answer, but these questions are like not simple at all. What does sacred mean to me? Ah, mm. uh, wow. I think it, it, it's hard. It means so many things to me. I, I think it, it's me. I am sacred. Mm. The, I look in the mirror and I see myself and I, mm. I have to honor myself in that way because I am sacred. My body, my soul, my mind, all of that is sacred. So I, I think that's the answer to your question. Me. What does it mean to me? It means me. It means Aniko. Aniko is sacred. Yeah. Beautiful. That is so beautiful. And we have, who is a sacred sister generally? Because, you know, we have sisterhood around us. And if you'd like to go sacred being and just, you know, go with that flow, that's fine too. So who is a sacred being to you? And what does it mean to have sacred being relationships? I think my sister would be that for me. Um, I think it means that no matter what it is that happens, that you experience, no matter the time frame, no matter, you know, the fact that maybe you haven't seen them in years, there will always be that connection. Even though she is my sister in blood, um, we did not grow up together. We only started getting super close um, in 2017, which is when she created uh, the voice box. Mm -hmm. um, and our connection has always been there. And it's always just felt m like more than blood mm -hmm. because blood is just biology. You know, biology is, it can be explained. Um, but the connection that we have, it, it can't. You know, so I think that is what it is to be sacred to. Like you, being sacred is not knowing everything, you know, like you're not having all the answers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, love it. And the last question is, how do you personally turn something mundane into something sacred? Mm. I sing it. <laughs> I sing. Truly, um, music, vocal cords, vibrations, the act of changing, uh, transmuting, it is magic. And uh, I literally create something from something so painful, something that hurt me that changed the course of the way I see things into something so beautiful. And I think that is sacred. Wow, so beautiful. Thank you so much. And for everyone that's here tuned in till the end of the episode and wants to connect with you more deeply, what are some of the ways that they can sit with you? Well, I think the best way is probably just by following me either on Twitter or on Instagram or on TikTok. Um, Patreon though, I think Patreon might be one of the best ways um, because it is, you know, I, I don't take monetary exchange lightly. I think it is very powerful. Um, money is very powerful. We've, we, you know, you can literally set an intention on that and it happens. Um, you can connect with me through Instagram, any of those, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Patreon, um, or just by listening to my music, you can connect with me too. Um, my Instagram handle, which is the same as my TikTok handle, is I N period I K O. And from there, you can click on my link tree and you'll be able to find everything that you might be asking for right now. Yeah. Wonderful. And we're going to link all of those into the episode description as well. So it's easy for our listeners to find that and connect with you and connect with your music and your beautiful extraterrestrial celestial ethereal <laughs> experience of life <laughs> so thank you thank you so, so much beautiful.
Wow. Yeah. Awesome. We, we know that we, this is literally like the most perfect introduction to season five that we could have possibly asked for. Wow. <laughs> I am so honored to be a part of that. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Seriously. And thank you for being my first podcast. Yay. 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 <laughs> well, we're excited to continue following you and all of the beautiful thought streams that you're presenting to the collective. Thank you so much for doing every single thing that you're doing for really stepping into who you are. And wow, what a powerful being you are, really. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, whoa, just trying, <laughs> trying to get better at these and accepting compliments. So I receive. I receive it. I receive everything that you're saying. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to all our listeners here too. And for those of you who want to dive deeper into it, join us on Patreon where we're going to be talking about our extraterrestrial experiences and multidimensional living. So yeah, we wish you all a wonderful rest of your day and we talk soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>